Well, hello there. I'm CE Tech Dude. Thanks for joining me today. About a week ago or so, I was on Amazon.com, a little website, maybe you've heard of it, and I came across a, uh, an interesting device. This is the Ocatel C11S. This phone is only $90 from Amazon. Heck of a deal. Question is, is it any good? That's what I'm here to find out. I'm CE Tech Dude. This is the Ocatel C11S review. First guys, let's go over what you get in the box. You get the phone with a screen protector and a case already installed, pretty sweet. You also get a micro USB cable and a power brick. All right guys, let's go over the design. This phone has an all plastic build, but it feels uh, pretty sturdy and it has some weight to it thanks to that large 3400 milliamp hour battery. On the top of the phone, you have a micro USB port. Let me repeat that. On the top of the phone, you have the micro USB port. Kind of a strange spot to be frank. Uh, unfortunately, there's no USB-C as well. You do have a headphone jack, and you'll want to use it because the single downfiring speaker is just not very good. On the right side of the phone, you have a power button and a volume rocker. On the bottom of the phone, you have that speaker grill, but again, don't be fooled by its appearance. It looks like two speakers, but it's only one speaker, downfiring, really tinny sound. On the back of the phone, you get a fingerprint sensor, which works well enough. Now there's also a dual SIM SD card slot somewhere, but where is it? Perhaps it's hiding under the removable back cover. I do want to mention that the process for installing the SIM card is a little ambiguous. So let me quickly show you the process. First, pry the back cover by using the little groove on the bottom left. Now when I say pry, I mean pry. It feels like the cover will snap, but don't worry, it doesn't. Once you get the cover open, you'll see the battery and SIM card slots. Here you'll find the 3400 milliamp hour replaceable battery. Now, when you get the phone, you'll want to be sure to remove the sticker covering the battery terminals or the phone will not power on. Now, the SIM card slot visible can hold an SD card or a SIM card slot, but where do you put the other SIM card? Well, you slide it right underneath the visible slot. When I did this the first time, I thought I just lost my SIM card since I did not see a way to get it out. But if you look closely, there is a little metal tab that you can pull to remove the SIM card. The top tray fits another SIM card or an SD card, and the SD card can be used to expand the internal storage once you format it, or you can use it as SD card storage, cool. Now let's work our way to the front of the phone and talk about the screen. I do appreciate the built-in screen protector for this phone, pretty sweet. The screen itself is a 5.5 inch 720p LCD. It has an 18 by nine aspect ratio. I really don't have many major complaints about it. Uh, it gets plenty bright for outdoor use and also dim enough for indoor use. YouTube videos and other content will play back at 720p and it looks fine. It's not the best screen ever, but for the price, it's more than acceptable. And my only major complaint besides the resolution that the colors are just a little soft. All right guys, for the specs, let's quickly go over the specs. This phone has a quad-core MediaTek MT6739WA processor running at 1.3 gigahertz. Also has three gigs of RAM built in and 16 gigabytes of built-in storage. You also have that dual SIM card and SD card slot in the back and a 3400 milliamp replaceable battery. Now for performance, and this is where the phone disappointed me the most. It just feels sluggish to me. It's running mostly stock Android with just a few uh, pretty cool additions to it, but it just feels laggy though. And I think it's due to the MediaTek processor, honestly. Now the fingerprint sensor works really well and had no complaints about that. This phone also has face unlock, which works decently, although it doesn't work most of the time in the dark, even when the option to light the screen up in the dark is selected. Now for gaming, it's the same way. Yeah, some games run fine, but again, it just feels laggy. I tried Mario Run, which worked fine, but had a little lag, and also tried PUBG, which loaded, but was unplayable due to the lag. And I believe all these issues, again, are related to that MediaTek processor, but what are you gonna do about it? Now, for call quality, this phone has a decent earpiece, and I was able to hear the person I was calling just fine. This phone is unlocked and has LTE bands for USGSM networks, although it doesn't contain band 71 for T-Mobile, which is the network I tested it on. It does have Volt and Wi-Fi calling though. And this phone will not work on Sprint or Verizon. Now for the speaker, the speaker on this phone is not great, although it gets plenty loud and works fine for notifications. But when playing music or videos, the sound is very tinny. Thankfully you do have that included headphone jack that I mentioned earlier, which is pretty awesome. Now for software, the software is just standard Android 8.1 Oreo, no heavy skin on top of it. If you go to the settings, you'll see a whole lot of additional features though. 
You can do screen writing gestures like you would do on a lot of custom ROMs. And what this means is that when the screen is off, you can write a letter that's mapped to a custom shortcut. Say I write the letter C for the camera and it opens the camera. I really like this idea, but unfortunately I ended up disabling this mostly because they were prone to accidental launching, even when the phone was in my pocket, which is really annoying. Battery life is also seemingly being affected uh, when they're enabled. Now you can also enable fingerprint sensor gestures too, which work fine. And you can also enable some motion gestures like flip the phone to mute the call, double tap the home button to lock the screen. And there's also double press power to launch the camera, but it's buried under the setting about phone on the phone. This phone also has a built-in barcode scanning app, which is kind of neat. And you also have an FM tuner app that works when you connect headphones. Overall, I really like this uh, software experience on the phone. It's pretty awesome. Now let's move on to the camera. The camera is a pretty weak point on this phone. Its primary eight megapixel camera is decent if things are well lit, but it's really bad in low light. Thankfully, once you press the shutter, it takes pictures quickly and you can hold the shutter down for burst mode and that works pretty well too. The camera also has an HDR mode that improves things a bit, but overall I'd say the camera is just not very great. There's also a portrait mode that uses a 0.3 megapixel camera for the shallow depth of field look, and it works pretty well. There's also some pretty cool filters and modes in the camera app that I enjoyed using. Video recording is locked at 1080p 30 frames a second on the front and rear camera. And there's also not any optical image stabilization in either of the cameras. This is a test of the Ocatel C11S rear camera with the built-in microphone, 1080p 30 frames a second. This is a test of the Ocatel C11S front-facing camera, 1080p 30 frames a second. What do you think? Now, quickly, let's go over the things that this phone does not have. There's no NFC in it, no notification LEDs, no fast charging, and like I mentioned earlier, it charges really slow. So the question comes down to, is this phone worth buying? At $90, it's a pretty cheap investment, and I think the phone makes a good backup device. But for a primary device, due to the sluggish feeling of the phone, it's gonna get pretty annoying very quickly. Overall, I'd rate this phone about a five out of 10. If they would just put a faster processor in it, I'd give it a higher score. But unfortunately, as it is now, I'm gonna have to give a five out of 10. All right, guys, this has been the Alcatel C11S review. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more great content. I'm CE Tech, you just got CE Tech. Have a great day and see you next time. Thanks.